What up, players? It's Wobots Tail up in this mode. Um, gonna be doing this horse video for you, how to paint a horse. This is a fully armored horse for a knight, knightly order for the empire. But it's not a lance and shield knight. You can see that this is a uh, it's supposed to be a two-handed hammer. I don't know why these guys only. It looks like a one-handed hammer, but um, you know whatever. Um, these guys come in the same knightly orders box as the Rake's Guard and the Knight's Panther, but um, they're a little bit different. They've got unhelmeted heads and they're holding hammers instead of lances, and they don't use their shields. So the color scheme is red, and you'll see it in just a little bit when I do the intro, but this is just for me to show you what the finished product looks like. And um, if you enjoy it, then um, please leave me a comment and hit the like button before you go. Gotta put those plugs in. Um, and uh, let me know what else I can paint for you, for you men and women of the Empire out there. Alright, thanks. What is up, players? It is I, your Emperor Karl Franz. And today, I will be showing you how to paint a horse of the knightly orders. So I have here a knight of the white wolf. And today, I will show you how to paint him. So, the color scheme we are going for is red barding for the armor and we are going for a light gray skin color for the horse itself and now I will hand it over to the tiny puny insignificant girly man Warboss Te who has a very small muscles and a very tiny girly body and he will tell you how to paint the horse of the Knight of the White Wolf <sighs> Thank you, Carl Franz so, like you said, we're going to be painting up this um, horse for the Knight of the White Wolves. And um, this is going to be a little bit different than most other Knightly Order horses you have because this one, the body is going to be kind of uh, gray, a light gray, while the barding is going to be very bright red. And um, that's because the Knights of the White Wolf, their color scheme is red. So, show you on the new Empire book. This is what the, the standard that we're going for. And the reason I decided to do this was because I just did the last Empire video I did was for Middenheim, I believe, yeah, blue and white. And um, these guys are based in Middenheim. So I thought, oh, you know, this will be a cool little. Um, cool little thing to do. Let me also show you what they look like in the Knights of the White Wolf entry. This is the actual soldier itself, which we'll do a separate video on, but today we're only doing the horse. So, uh, looks like that. Yeah, so even in this picture, he's kind of like this light, light gray. And, um, yeah, so that's a good this Uniforms and Heraldry book of the Empire is a great resource for this, so let's get started. And um, once again, Lewis. <gasps> oh, Master, why does that man always have to come in and yell so loud? I'm sorry, have you seen my Adeptus Battle Gray? <laughs> yes, he's right here, Master. Okay, so starting with the Deptus Battle Gray, well first thing I did was I primed my model with Duplicolor Matte Primer. So a lot of people ask if I prime my models or not, and uh, yes I do. So if you're a new viewer, I definitely do prime my models. Um, but it's, it, it just looks a lot like the... Um, looks a lot like the plastic of Games Workshop. I actually primed this horse white like a long time ago um, back when I first got my Empire models <laughs> and back when I thought white was white was the the shiz the best color for any kind of priming and um, yeah so it was sitting in my box and I saw it and I was like oh I gotta reprime this whole thing So what are the differences if you want to build one of these guys? Well, first of all, they don't have lances. They've got um, also they they don't have helmets on their heads. Uh, you can make them with the Empire Knightly Orders box. Just take the these guys with the beards that look like space wolves, 
and um, these hammers that they've got and use those. Right. Uh, so there we go. And you're also going to want to paint the tail as well. Forgot about that tail. So the Knights of the White Wolf, how are they different? Well, they don't have, like I said, i got to re-glue this tail. They don't have their own, they don't have lances. They have um, these two-handed hammers. So... They always strike last in combat, but they always get their strength bonus. They don't have that lance um, strength bonus for the first round of combat, unfortunately. But if you're planning on grinding and being in there for a long time, not just charging in like a Bretonian, then these are pretty good. I think the new Mephiston Red is going to be great, but I can't seem to find it, so I'm going with my Mechrite Red now. Step two, we're going to paint all the barding on the armor. Now, for some reason, I can't. My poster tack is all non sticky today. Yeah, and the great thing about Mephiston Red is that it covers almost as well as a foundation paint and yet looks really, um, really bright and vibrant, like Blood Red, the old Blood Red used to look. Definitely go with that if you can get it. If you have access to Mephiston Red. I was reading up a little of the fluff on these guys. I love the back. Man, the background is like really so, so intriguing to me because they played such a big part in the Storm of Chaos campaign, the worldwide campaign said that um, these guys were garrisoned all around Middenheim and then were sent by Toddbringer to go out and fight in other places because Middenheim was being attacked uh, the most. It was very patriotic of, you know, there's this very big feeling of patriotism among all the all the men to join up and all the nobles to join in this knightly order but now that the storm of chaos is over in the Sigmar's Heirs book for Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 2nd Edition it says that these the knights are starting to the Templars they're like Templars they're starting to see if they can uh, come back home to Middenheim, because I guess the Graf Boris Toddbringer is sent, sending them all over the world. I decided to give this guy a cape. If your Knight of the White Wolf doesn't have a cape, it might make him easier to paint. And uh, any mistakes you make, do not worry. No worries. You can clean them up later. That's why we're only doing base colors now. Right, red, and then we're also painting um, boat gun silver or boat gun metal for the chain mail in just a little bit. Actually, now that I think about it, I think I might go with the brighter chain mail. Chain mail seems like a much brighter color and more appropriate for the for the Empire troopers, whereas boat gun metal seems more like dark, savage, primal, meant for monsters, demons, orcs and goblins, the savage races, the uncivilized ones, as uh, Marius would say. So yeah, thanks for watching everybody. I'm glad you um, I'm glad you guys are watching and um, leaving comments and stuff. Try to respond to every single comment. The junk thing about about uh, YouTube is that you can't 
you only see the latest comments, right? When you have a new notification, you can only see the latest comments that were made. So sometimes I'll respond to like 20 comments at once um, because I've been lucky enough that people comment on my videos and like I'll respond to 20 at once and then I'll only see like if anybody responded to the very last one. So I'll have to like dig through all my 20 comments to see if anybody else responded and to the comments I left them and it's just, oh man, a load of hassle. I wish I could, there was a way that YouTube could post up all of the comments you get regardless of, you know, whichever is the newest. I'm just going to take it off my little ghetto turntable. Sorry, I'm kind of rambling today. I had uh, two cups of coffee to get me through work this afternoon. I had that mid-afternoon slump. That I'm sure a lot of you know about. Oh, that mid-afternoon slump. Yeah, so it looks like they wanted to make this horse a unicorn. I'm gonna paint that as uh, silver since unicorns cannot be used by the Empire. Only wood elves, I believe. Yeah. There we go. Just gonna clean up the bottom. So when um, in just a minute I'm going to go back and paint repaint all the skin, any mistakes I made on the skin. You just want to turn your model around to a bunch of different directions and if you made any mistakes like here on the tail, on the skin, then you just want to go back over with them. So I'm going to do that and then uh, when we get back we will start working on the chainmail, the saddle, and then the washes. Hey, hey gang, so um, after I let all that red dry, I actually took some chaos black and I painted in the bottom of the saddle blanket. <laughs> and the chainmail on the horse's neck to give us a good base for the um, for the dry brushing that we're going to do with the metallics. Um, but while I was filming, my, my girlfriend called and I forgot to turn my ringer off, so it was just kind of loud and noisy and disruptive, so I was like, ah, I'm just going to film over it. I didn't really get that far. Okay, so um, <coughs> next thing we're going to do is we're going to paint in the uh, wash. We're going to use Caraberg Crimson or the old school Ball Red and we are going to paint in all of the red armor plates, give it some shading. This new red wash is simply fantastic. One of my subscribers, oh I can't remember off the top of my head, I should have wrote it down, mentioned that Games Workshop is put some uh, purple into the mixture, into the formula, which makes it deeper and uh, shade red better, rather than just straight red tones, which they did for Ball Red. And I can totally see that. Oh my goodness, my cat knocked down a whole bunch of CDs. Terrifying. How come, how come none of my video like my video attempts tonight are totally cursed. What's going on? Lewis? What? Are you... Are you using your magic to make things happen while I'm trying to film this Empire tutorial? Maybe. <sighs> Lewis, turn five. All right, just grow up. Don't be so immature. I'm painting your stupid mortise engine. It's not my fault. It takes like two days to upload each section. Yeah, well, I don't like having my half finished mortise engine, sitting in the garage, can't go out and pick up any cute chicks because you're here painting this stupid hairy 
fantasy space wolf. I don't really have a comeback, Lewis. All I can say is I will get back to your Mortis engine, I promise. I mean, I've already finished filming and rendering the the Banshees, the Spirit Horde at the front. You know, it just takes a long time to upload to YouTube lately, that's all. It's just taken me a while. Ah, well. Well, fooey. Nuts to death. I'm gonna go back to my room and have a hot pocket. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna paint Averlyn Sunset, which is gonna be the yellow of the saddle blanket. Kinda like Averlyn, the black and yellow, but you'll notice <clears throat> that, um, yeah, it's not in the Empire book, but in the Uniforms and Heraldry book that I showed you earlier, the saddle blanket, the square and the seat was yellow. So that's what we're gonna do. And like I said, Avalon Sunset, the new range, oh, so fantastic. Really great as a base color. Um, just phenomenal. It goes on, it goes on really nice, but it's super vibrant. Goes on as well as one of the old foundation colors like Ian and Dark Sun, but yeah, like I said, it's just so bright and vibrant that you know it's much better than Ian and Dark Sun was. I'm gonna let that dry, and then it's a little streaky looking still yet. So I'm gonna just do the same thing in just a minute. <laughs> but while we're waiting, we're gonna take some chain mail or whatever the new equivalent is which I don't have yet we are going to paint the metal of the horse which is the chains chain reins and uh, I'm actually gonna wait on the rest because it looks like the wash the red wash is still kind of wet so let's come back in a second to finish that. <sighs> yeah, it's gonna be bad news bears if I start painting over here. The wash is still really, really damp. So what I'll do is, I'll take <laughs> some Badab Black or Nuln Oil, and I'm gonna paint the horse's skin and hose, legs, belly, everything. We'll do this and then we'll get on to the reins. Oops. Make sure to get the tail too. I'm almost out of Badab Black. I have to buy some of that new known oil. Oh no. <laughs> there you go. So I'll come back in a minute to fix the uh Fix the chain mail, and then we'll uh, see what that looks like in just a second. Okay, so once your red, red wash is dried, I'm gonna do a little bit of a <coughs> tutorial now on how to do chain mail. Get some chain mail on the very tip of your brush, wipe off most of it, almost like a dry brush, because I guess that's kind of what it is, and then you're gonna go at an angle focus here 
try and stay in one direction so that it's a little consistent. Okay, so you should end up something like this on this side. Right, <clears throat> there you go. We're also going to paint the unicorn horn on this guy's head. Unicorns don't exist. And then, getting down to the nitty gritty and the wire, I'm gonna paint calf and brown on the straps. Any straps underneath the horses, any reins, anything like under the horse right here, under the saddle, we're gonna be painting calf and brown. Our trusty go to color for quick, simple leather. Okay. Then we're going to be painting... Um, what was next? What was next? Oh yeah! I, I looked at the book. The Empire book has this little part, armor part by the, the neck here, Chaos Black. So, just going to paint it black. A little, uh, piece of armor separating the chest plate from the from the, the top. So I'm gonna copy the book so I am giving you the the like the official heavy metal color scheme for a Knight of the White Wolf. If you have a Middenheim army or a midden Middenland army or your army has lots of uh, if you're trying to center it around Ulrich, the god of winter and war and wolves, rather than Sigmar <clears throat> as like a, you know, as a fluff thing, then this is kind of the color scheme that I would suggest because I'm trying to follow it as closely as I can. The reds of the white wolves of Ulrich. Okay, so there we go. And ladies and gentlemen, that is just about it. That's like the level one, level one painting. Now I'm gonna show you how to add just a little bit more. So go back to your Mephist in Red, which I finally found, buried under a whole bunch of other stuff. And we're going to be painting the inside of the plates. So, like this. What that does is it leaves the leaves the wash kind of like near the spines. It gives the illusion that the sun is shining mainly on the inner parts and creating these shadows. It's like an it's like an optical illusion. I love this with fist on red. Usually my, my my reds, like I don't like my reds this vibrant and bright and red. I usually like dark flesh terracotta you know, darker style, but for the for this color scheme, I think that this is gonna be really striking on the field. And don't worry if you, you get some in the shadows of where the rivets of the horse's armor are. We're just gonna be going back over that in a little bit later. Look how that picks up. Picks that color up, really brightens it, and makes it look really, really alive and vibrant. I like that color, I use that color a lot. Vibrant.
and as you can see I'm kind of painting right from the pot I'm using this as an experiment for myself to see if the days of the wet palette are over with these new paints and so far I'm liking what I'm seeing these new paints paint really well right out of the pot I think before using blood red it was almost unheard of to go straight from the, from a pot of blood red to uh, to the model but nowadays anything is possible it's possible to paint red from the bottle without it getting all clumpy what what was that Yeah, so just like before, with the horse's helmet, or head armor, I'm trying to stick to the center rather than the sides, where the, or the, um, the grooves, or where the shadows are. Stick to the center, and everything will be fine. I mean, everything will be fine. This is one particular YouTuber that, you know, I love his stuff. I think he does a lot of great things for the for the community, but I just I can't stand the way he talks in his videos. It's nothing against him personally, but when I listen to him and his commentaries and uh, just when I'm watching his videos and and then he'll talk, he'll talk like this in his grumble, growly voice for like a good 5-10 minutes and I'm like it just sounds like you're gargling with pebbles you sound like John Malkovich and I don't really appreciate watching your videos and listening to John Malkovich although I love John Malkovich love me some John Malkovich can't air up in this mud Ooh, that mechrite red was so bright. Once it has the um, wash on. Wash on, wash off. Look at this guy up here. He wants me to paint him. But I say no, no, no. Oh my goodness. I need to go to sleep. So I'll show you just one more level of highlighting after this in case you want to go the extra mile but really once you get this red popping like this with the Mephiston red or any of the new Citadel reds um, should be fine look at the way that looks that's almost I'm gonna say that's almost a blood dragon in fact if I ever paint the blood dragon vampire count uh, model this is probably gonna come pretty close to it Okay, so we're gonna finish up now. As you can see, I already did the basing. And um, the last things that I did after the last video, after that red wash dried, was I wanted to experiment and see what it would look like if I got some black wash in there. So you're gonna be taking the new known oil, and I'll do a little bit of it to show you what I, what I was able to accomplish. Um, you're gonna be going into all of the lines, wherever there are hard armor lines, like down here, um, between every every plate and not so much on the, the barding but just a little bit at the bottom with the uh, rivets yeah I'm just gonna make it a little wet make it wet Your uh, red wash should have showed you a little bit of where is a good place to, where good places are to go, where the shadows naturally come in. Um, so we're just kind of following that a little bit. With here, you can be a little bit more free and liberal with the with the wash. 
because this is under the horse's head, so it's a little bit more shaded, uh, shadowy down here, I mean. Both sides. Yeah, I did this a couple of times to get it right before deciding that I was going to do it. Some techniques, I'm like, okay, I don't know if this is going to translate well to the video, or, you know, or I don't know if this is going to work, or if it's going to be better to just keep it the way it is, and this was one of them. Started filming, got a little bit to the end, almost to the end, and um, yeah, I just couldn't couldn't reconcile how bright the red is supposed to look with how dark it had become. So I'm painting down here, painting the wash into these cracks and crevices, and I realized maybe the reds just need to be a little bit brighter. The washes are doing the job; they're they're putting you know the lining in, giving a lot of great shadows but <clears throat> can't just rely on the washes. So we're gonna let that sit for a while, then we're gonna come back with our Mephiston Red. And I'm gonna start painting in the, the armor plates. Mephiston Red. stuck from the high ones, like here in the back, the horsey's tail armor. Ah! 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 I totally messed up. That's right. There are no mistakes that are so bad that they cannot be fixed. Just managed to get some red paint on the saddle. Oh, stay on your cork, Sir Knight. This is atrocious. Anyways, I'm, I'm gonna keep working. I'll fix that in post. So you see how I'm kind of keeping the uh, paint on the ridge. Or up here at the top where it's nice and bright. If this was a Vampire Count's horse, then um, it would just be getting progressively darker, but I want to keep it as bright as possible. It's a nice bright blood red color. leaving the dark the darkness in the folds at the bottom. Avalon sunset to the rescue. Alright I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep on working and then when I get to the end we will um we will wrap this puppy up. I'll also teach you in a little while how to do the highlighting for the for the um, horse body itself, but yeah, let me show you here, we're lining up the armor up here, giving it some good bright highlights, especially like anywhere in the armor that pops out, like the, the eyepiece here for the horse. The center of these plates plates on the neck, or on the face. The reason I'm hitting the center and not the sides is because the sides both have rivets, so they both are going to be like fading into black where the rivets are, but you can hit the top part, no problem. It's kind of just what we're doing here. I 
That looks pretty nice. I'm very happy with that. You don't want it to like to end up like dark and grim because that's very Blood Knights. And these guys look kind of colorful and heroic. So we'll leave that there, and um, is there anything else we want to do? Oh yeah, we want to highlight, or dry brush. So we're going to take a nice sized brush, and why don't we jump up to Codex Gray. This step, we're putting some paint on a brush, wiping the majority off so there's only a little bit when we when you drag the brush along, it's not too much. And if there is, then just wipe it off a little bit more. Now we're just gonna basically attack the horse and skin. Trying to get the paint to pick up on the, the raised edges. You get to see me use my highlighting technique to great effect in the uh, Mortis Engine tutorial. That one was fun to paint up. It was awesome. Okay, then we're going to do the same with um, Space Wolves. It's going to be our splotchy. Use Fortress Gray now, do the same thing. to the sides and the edges if we can. Focus Igor, please. <laughs> okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to take some really, really watered down Space Wolves Gray. Oh, not, that's Fortress Gray. Where's my Space Wolves Gray? Here it is. They all look the same under the light. And we're going to take a small brush that isn't doing so hot anymore, like this one, and we're just going to take our Space Wolves Gray on the edge, and we're going to wipe off like 90% of it. Then we're just going to do small little splotches. So we're going to put the tip on, and then we're going to twist. It's almost like stippling. Just while we go, I try to do like a random, random pattern. Don't worry, it's gonna seem weird and bright, but you wanna do enough that it's gonna look like a pattern. If you don't like it, if you just want a straight gray pony, then. You can just have that, but I decided to try my hand at this modeled look. So I'm doing a combination of, of stabbing the paint down, as well as um, pressing the tip down and then twisting it to create a variety of different effects. And I'm only sticking to the upper legs. Don't go any further down. And 
I guess the knee joints. If you have any modeling, uh, model, like, stippling effects, uh, <coughs> tips, then please feel free to give me some in the comments, because this is only like my second try, and I'm still learning myself. Okay, the very, very last step we're going to do to touch this guy up is we're going to tie in all that, um, all the highlights together by using, uh, known oil to to uh, tie down all the colors and darken everything. And before we do, I use a, I did the same technique, but I also added a little bit of skull white to the mix, just to get a little bit of a lighter modeling color, and I think it turned out pretty well. If modeling is not your thing, then um, by all means, like I said, don't forget about it. Don't worry, don't do it. But um, if you want something different for your horsies, then you could certainly do a lot less by trying it out and hey I'm a new you know I'm new to this modeling technique so uh, if you have any tips or techniques or you, you can show me post a video response on how you do it love to see how, uh, how other people do it out there when but for me this is a pretty good pretty good standard so thanks for watching hope you enjoyed this uh, how to paint a a horse for the Knights of the White Wolf. Uh, Middenheim, if you got a lot of knights that have the two-handed hammers instead of the lance and shield, this is a great effective color scheme. Um, stay tuned, we'll do the knight right now.